All right, controversial Netflix host, so-called comedian Chelsea Handler has officially now entered the realm of unhinged. Now, despite portraying herself as a champion for gay rights, the late-night host launched an old, vile, vicious, homophobic rant on Twitter against Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. This tweet is so graphic, so despicable. Well, we're not even going to show it to you on the program, but it's safe to say that in Chelsea's world, decency is only reserved for her liberal friends. Of course, this kind of repulsive behavior from Handler is nothing new. In December, Handler tweeted out a promo for her show featuring a mean-spirited parody of White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders. Here with Reaction, Fox News contributor Tommy Lahren, Lahren is with us. You know, Tommy, here's the thing. I'm not going to call for her firing, boycott. I don't do it for Bill Maher, that idiot Stephen Colbert. I, I don't care what people say. Everyone has the power to change the channel. But if we say something that is deemed as conservatives inappropriate, they want our head on a chopping block, then begins the boycotts, then begins the, the silencing. What's your reaction? Well, we have to point out the hypocrisy, especially to individuals like Chelsea Handler, who continue to display this pattern. And you know what? I got to tell you, Sean, I am so sick of these Hollywood liberals who sit at their award shows and they're pearl clutching. They're talking about speaking your truth. Me too. Time's up there for everyone. And then they tweet crap like this that's disgusting and vile. And yet we're supposed to buy this whole charade that there are these wonderful moral people. No, no, not falling for it. All right. Let me show a little bit. You actually debated her. And I remember reading about it at the time. Let's remind people a little bit about what happened. I do believe that he's a good president. I do believe that he's done things. And people talk about all the time, it's, well, he tweeted something, and that's mean. I can get over the meanness of his tweets if he's helping middle-class Americans, if he's helping America, if he's putting America first, if he's strengthening us on the world stage, if he's enforcing our border. I can deal with a mean tweet. But why? But... But what? But but mean mean represents so many other things. He's a, he's kind of like a toddler, like an angry, you know. He's a toddler. He lashes out at people and he's vengeful and he says really nasty things. What is she saying? She's acting like a toddler. Well, of course she is. She's also the person that organized the, the Women's March, the, the Pink Hat March at Sundance Film Festival last year. This woman, although I did have a decent conversation with her since then, she's just gone off the deep end. I don't know if it's because she lost her show at Netflix or she doesn't know what she's doing now. She wants to be an activist. I don't know, but I thought that she was at least somewhat level-headed. And I used to think she was funny, but she's like the rest of these so-called comedians. They inject politics that they don't understand, they know nothing about, into their acts. And then not only are they not funny, they're disgusting. Disgusting, and yet they get away with it because they're on the left, as usual. What did you think of her personally? Personally, I have to be honest with you, Sean. She was very kind to me. She was respectful. We had a good conversation. I can't say the same about other liberals that I've debated, debated or shared the stage with. But she was. She was very Who nice to me. And she seemed what actually other big open. liberals? Uh, I didn't know you were doing that. <laughs> Oh, boy, Trevor Noah, Bill Maher, all the ladies wow. of The View. I mean, let's join the list. I was just in West Hollywood earlier today talking to a bunch of the loving and tolerant left. I put myself in these situations because I hope for a productive conversation. I think I have one with Chelsea, but my goodness, that doesn't mean I'm not going to rip her apart for what she's doing on Twitter because I find it disgusting. I find it hypocritical, and she needs to be called out. All right, we look forward to the next Tommy Laren Hits the Road. We'll show it right here on Hannity. Tommy, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. I do want to help people. I want people to have health care. I want people to feel safe. I want people to pay into a system that's going to return the favor, you know, if and when they need it. Most people end up needing medical care. It's not like elective, you right. know? No, I understand. It's kind of like a basic fundamental right. Right. But not for me. I, don't, I believe it is my right to purchase health care. I don't believe it's my right to pay for it for other people. I also think that the universal health care system fails. I think it, it fails the very people because you and I... It's so easy to say, and I'm glad you don't. It's so easy for us to say, well, you th I, I could sit here and say, you just want government control, and you could sit here and say, oh, well, you hate sick and poor people. And that's a discussion I don't want to have. And that, luckily, that's not one we're having. Yeah. But for me, we all want what's best for people. I just believe that limited government is the way to do it. I don't think that government does well in healthcare. I think it's 
that is, it's proven by the VA that the government doesn't do well in health care. So we need to find alternatives. What's, what's right now is not working. What we had before Obamacare was not working. I think you increase competition. I think that's the way to do it. And I also believe in, in allowing states to take more control. I think that that will help them effectively manage their own citizens because every state is so different. I think putting more in the hands of the states. If you have a state that needs to expand Medicaid and you need those Medicaid dollars, then that state needs to decide it for itself. But every state isn't created equal. And I, that's where I align on that. It's just. I think that the, the free marketplace does better than okay, the government. Okay, so do you have a health care plan or no? Well, luckily, I'm 24, so I'm, I am still on my parents. And to, to say, yeah, you can laugh. You can, you can laugh. I pay my parents for it. You can laugh. I don't care. There are things. They can laugh. They can laugh. At least she's being, hey, she's being, stop, stop, stop. She's being honest. Has there ever been a, an event that's happened in the last six months that you've, that you've stopped and said, wow, this guy's not right? <laughs> you know, agreeing with what every move someone makes, every tweet they send, no, I don't. But I do believe that the positives outweigh the negatives. I do believe that he's a good president. I do believe that he's done things. And people talk about all the time, it's like, well, he tweeted something, and that's mean. I can get over the meanness of his tweets if he's helping middle-class Americans, if he's helping America, if he's putting America first, if he's strengthening us on the world stage, if he's enforcing our border. I can deal with a mean tweet. But why? But, but what? But, but a mean, mean represents so many other things. He's, a, he's kind of like a toddler, like an angry, you know, he's a toddler. He lashes out at people and he's vengeful and he says really nasty things and, and he whines, he's a crybaby. He's, he's like, never in modern American history have we ever seen a crybaby of this nature serving as the president of the United States. He whines and bitches and moans. Everything's unfair. It's unfair. It's unfair. He's the fucking president. Act like it. So where are you with the trans thing? Are you, you're not into trans? For me, and I think this has been well documented through media. I'm some... I saw some tweet, but I didn't. I didn't understand it, and I saw people you okay. were tweeting about. Yeah, so sure. elaborate. Well, there's. We, if we're talking about the issue of LGBT, or are we talking about the military? Uh, let's start with the military. Okay. Or no, let's start. Yes, start with the military. Okay, we'll start with the military. So for me, um, reinstating the ban on transgenders in the military, I think was a, a very positive step. I, I do, and we can do it. And it's not. And they can boo and whatever. I would appreciate it if they wouldn't because I'm trying to make a point that I think is, is very important. For me, it's not because I have anything against trans people. If those that follow me and know me and know people that follow me and follow my show before, they stop, know. Stop. Just stop. Come on, you guys. We're more mature than this. Go on. When it comes to social issues, I'm libertarian. When it comes to social issues, as has been well documented, I don't care what the hell you do, I don't want to pay for it. That's why I align on those things. I am not anti, I am not anti-gay, I'm not anti-same-sex anti marriage, I am not anti most of the social issues. I'm not sitting here as someone, I don't, I don't take issue with those things. I don't care if you want to bake a cake, don't bake a cake, I don't give a shit. What I care about is military effectiveness and readiness, and the facts are this. Transgenders in the military, whereas I have acknowledged this time and time again, if you want to serve your country, as I know you said the other night, if you want to serve your country, that is perhaps to me the biggest sacrifice you can make and a very strong character Absolutely. trait. And anyone that wants to serve their country, I give an enormous amount of respect to those individuals, whether you're trans, whether you're straight, whether I don't care what you are, I give you respect and you deserve the utmost. But here's the thing, the military is not about the individual. It's not just about, well, I want to serve so I should be able to. There are folks that are that have you know, severe asthma that are not allowed to serve because of their, their severe asthma. So when you say transgenders in the military, when they're, when they're heavily medicated or they've just gone through a surgery, that makes them non-deployable. If you've got a military- I don't think they're gonna be out in the field after they've had an operation, you know? The, exactly. They're not gonna be heavily medicated. Exactly, exactly. It's hormone that's why they, therapy, though. Exactly, that, that's, that's a big why difference they have to stay being on med Hormone therapy is a lot different than being like hopped up on pills, like I know, Vicodin or I something. I know, but they are not allowed to operate if they are medicated. So that means that they cannot deploy. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's not the fact that for I'm- For a period of time. For a that, period that of time. But there are plenty of people readiness. that you can apply that to with injuries. I mean, it costs, okay, 
it, you could apply that to anybody that could, they have a window after having, and not all of them are having surgical procedures. Some of them are, some of them aren't. And when they're having the surgical procedures, you know, they're not scheduling it around the time that they're deployed. They're taking care of that and then they're, they're coming out there. Nobody's saying, hey, I want time off while we're in the middle of a wall, uh, war because I want my penis. No one's doing that. Well, I mean, that's unreasonable. No one. It, I, I agree with you, it is unreasonable, but it happens. Here's the problem when? is when this. When did it happen? The ta when? Who? Chelsea Manning. Chelsea Manning is a prime example of taxpayers funding hormone treatment therapy for a traitor. I have a problem with that. I don't want my ta because I want to help people. Whoa, whoa, they're paying. I got to touch in that military budget. In that military budget, that it would be 2.4 to 8.4 million dollars that they would spend on hormone therapy when they're spending 45 million dollars a year. On I got it. Viagra and Cialis. I and I don't agree with that either. And I don't agree with that either. I, let me let me be very honest. Why do they I don't spend agree with so much that. money on Viagra? I, mean, I don't agree with that either. But Chelsea, I have to tell you this: until we can afford treatment and prosthetics for the military and the veterans that have fought for this country, I don't believe in paying for a sex change or hormone treatment therapy. That's my personal belief. Okay. And I don't understand that there's a disagree with it. I, I understand that, but I'm not coming from a place of, I don't want you there because I don't want you to serve. I'm coming from a place where it affects military readiness and the military has attested to that. But then why don't you make a stand? I mean, why don't you make it an issue of yours to talk about the, how much money they spend on Viagra and forget about PTSD. This is just so men, I mean, it, some of it is for PTSD and I guess guys have to come at some point, so they need it. And I get that, fine, I'll give you that. But. Some of it isn't for PTSD. It's $45 million. Shouldn't you be focusing your energy towards that rather than people who are already when Do you know how hard it is? I mean, I'm not going to, I don't want to be condescending at all, but these people are volunteer, volunteering to serve our country. And it's not easy for them to even walk out the door. Never mind walking to the military. I understand. And, they, and that's. I'm not taking away from their bravery. I'm not taking away from their courage, their bravery, or their character whatsoever. What I'm saying is the reason that I'm talking about this is because when a general comes or those that are on the battlefield, they come and say, this is a real problem with someone that's on Viagra, not being able to serve, not being able to deploy, then, that, then that's an issue that's going to take precedence for me. But when it comes to effectiveness on the battlefield, I don't believe that the military is a place for a social experiment. I don't believe it's the place for feelings in the I don't individual. Think it's a, but, here's what, but here's the thing. I don't think it's a social experiment because trans... The trans community, they're not going away. It's only gonna get bigger. This is, a, this is 2017. It's, they're not going anywhere. Gay people are not going anywhere. Soon they're gonna probably take over.